Hi guys, my name is Elaine. Um, if you're new, welcome to my channel. If you're not new, welcome back. So, I figured I wanted my channel to be very authentic and not just be like one tone to like, ooh, hauls or ooh, makeup videos or ooh, singing videos, which all of those I haven't done yet, but they're coming, trust me. But, um, I wanted to also have like sit down talks and here I am sitting down and ready to talk. So, the first one, as you can see from the title, is going to be talking about depression. And that, uh, okay, the first thing I want to say about depression, <sighs> depression is real. Like, it is so real, it's scary. And as a person of color, as a visible minority, it's so easy culturally to make it seem like, Oh, depression's not real, they're making it up, they're overreacting, just whip them back into shape and they'll be Gucci, but depression's real. I went through it and it gets pretty dark. So this is dated 4-17-2016. So that's April 17th. 2016. Only three years ago. Not even three years ago yet. This was at eleven fifty-five PM. And I titled it Lonely Cries, guys. Is it getting darker? <sighs> Hold on. So I called it Lonely Cries. And if I show you how long this, you know, uh, yeah, I'll show you. Can I even? My feelings. <laughs> Oh, a piece of paper. Oh, my feelings. Okay. I'm going to try to look here. But I feel like you can see into me. And I'm already getting emotional. I really hope I can keep it together. So I'm going to read to you what I described to me in my lonely cries. Okay? Oh, by the way, I haven't read this. Like, I haven't read it. I just know it's sad. I know for a fact that it's sad. Well, here we go. Oh, that's how I started too. <laughs> well, here we go again. Yet another night, I lay awake in my bed thinking of all the things that are wrong with me and all the reasons why no one wants to be my friend. Uh, okay. Um, don't get me wrong. I have friends. I even have close friends. But I don't have those unconditional friends or in other words, a best friend. Um, I no longer have that one person I can chill with all day, even in silence, and be content at the fact that we are spending um, that time together. On the nights I have my mental breakdowns, I have no one to call. I just want to be able to sit with someone and vent on and on about nonsense, and they wouldn't judge because they understand. I'm getting back to that mindset of will anyone ever notice if I was gone Whew. which is scary because it was those same thoughts that made me consider mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that made me consider no longer existing sure there are people who are who after a while would wonder what happened to me but that's all all I want is to have that one yeah just one person who is always there for me and finds it hard to go a day without me and vice versa what hurts the most <laughs> is that I see those kinds of friendships every day I constantly am in the mindset of strong unbreak huh I constantly I'm in the my midst, okay, I'm constantly in the midst of strong unbreakable bonds between two people and I can't help but be envious. What hurts even more is that not too long ago, I had exactly that. Not one, not one, but two times. The first time, I didn't even, I didn't even know how that ended, still to this day, facts. The second, we ended up drifting apart. All that. All that I concluded from those two incidents is that 
the common denominator is me and me is in capital letters me um based on logic the problem based on logic the problem is me i'm the reason why no one wants to be that close with me i'm selfish bossy <laughs> pretty damn needy no wonder why no one would care yeah. no one would care to be by my side oh no one would care to be my ride or die oh but there's a solution says every christian friend i have pray about it well no oh well no and then a cuss word but i'm not going to cuss um your answer to everything is pray about it it's not to say that god wouldn't be able to help me in this situation because he is well beyond capable i'm just sick of that being the only practical response to all my problems so what do i do in the meantime i lie in my bed um cover myself with my blanket and allow my pillow to soak my tears yeah i did that a lot i know i i know why i'm crying i just want to stop it this on and off depression bs is the most annoying thing on the face of the earth one moment you're perfectly fine the next moment you find yourself at a drive through at Tim Hortons waiting in line to order your box of donuts 12 in a case you didn't know oh oh 12 in case you didn't know ha huh, I thought I was funny and plan to go back to your room and partake in those donuts with absolutely no intention of sharing it's sad that food has become my best friend I have been so broken that I can't even bear being alone and rely on food to comfort me in nights like these. Okay, this is a double whammy. I did not expect that. I wonder if I'll ever find that person in my life. I thought I found it this year, but I had, but I had to yet again go and F it up. <laughs> vulgar girl she is okay vulgar um i guess only time will tell only time will tell if this will ever change through writing these thoughts i've stopped crying so that's a start i'm gonna have to find happiness somehow because with the neglect that i feel from being here at school paired with the lack of close friends i have back at home all all that's left is me. I have to be able to see the joy that I bring myself and stop relying on other people to provide me my happiness. Can't can't say I'm very hopeful, but even God said that faith as big as a mustard seed, well I guess in this case, a small, is big enough to see him work through my life. Well, wow. so, for those people who know me and didn't know I suffered through depression, there you go. <laughs> so, I can't tell you when the onset of my depression was. I honestly have no idea. I just know that as a kid, not really as a kid, kind of as a preteen is when it started. I started to have really dark thoughts, like really dark thoughts. And the crazy thing is, I have this cousin of mine, her name's Nikki, and like there's times, like there's this there's this gap in my life and I don't know anything about this gap, like what happened or what I went through, nothing. So she, there's times that she'll bring up and I'm like I don't know what you're talking about. And then she'd be like, oh, but Elaine, we did da 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 da. And I'm like, I genuinely have no recollection of that memory at all. And I feel like it low key has to do with something that happened to me that just made me like harden myself. And I saw myself get very 
Elaine, no, 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 no. <laughs> hmm, wait a minute. Not today, Jesus. Mm. Um, I, I saw myself like start to go, oh, there it goes, <laughs> start to get very down on myself and that translated in like me being rude and mean to people and also me like eating, overeating, clearly I still suffer from that, haven't uh, shut off the depression weight. But yeah, it's so weird that there's this huge gap in my life that like I've completely, I've completely like shut out of my mind and I, I so wish to know what happened to me because at least I would know like where this stemmed from or whatever, but I genuinely have no recollection. I'm going to be really, really honest and show you, like try to show you what the depression used to do to me, like I would... I would be sitting like in church and start bowling, stuff like that. Yeah, I was, I had suicidal thoughts. Luckily for me, I don't know if this was like a thing that God instilled in me, but like I have this fear of, um, of blood and fear of death and fear of pain that I would never actually follow through with a suicide attempt because it would inflict something on me that I'm uncomfortable with. So that's a good balance, thank you Jesus. But I feel like I would have taken my life by now. It probably would have happened when I was like 15. Honestly, honestly, I feel like that was when it was really dark. And then I had thought I would gotten over it, but then getting into university and stuff, there is the, the mixture of being stressed at school and then being away from home, being away from family. But when you do go home, the relationships aren't the same. And then when you're here at school, you have to forge new relationships. Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. Clearly, in my writing, there was one that I thought was going to stick. And I was really, really hopeful for this friendship, but <laughs> whatever. But yeah, like, you get in a really, really really dark place when you're depressed and I hate when people tell other people who are going through like mental health issues to pray it away <sighs> because when you're in that state it's not like you don't believe God can do anything about it but like you're so far deep in a dark place that praying is not on your mind like pray it away I'm dealing through something right now like if I could have prayed it away I would have done that a long time ago like don't tell me foolishness like pray it away you know kind of thing mm. Mm, mm, mm. so <laughs> um yeah I was suicidal that's a thing a lot of people don't know I also used food to cope with my depression um I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to change that because sometimes when I'm down on myself, I'll go to some hurts and I'll get a box of 12 donuts and I'll eat all those 12 donuts in one sitting. And I don't know about you, but that's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. And I hate to laugh. I'm not trying to make light of it, but like, I'm just trying to, you know, <sighs> trying to find a way to to, to, I don't know. I'm just trying to find a way, okay? I'm trying to find a way. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk about, like, what depression looked like for me and kind of bring light to a reality that a lot of people of color don't want to acknowledge. We always want to make it seem like, oh, you see, coming to Canada has made you soft or hanging out with these white kids bringing problems into the house that you wouldn't have had back home or you see this is what happens when we don't beat our children or you see da -da -da -da. like there's umpteen amount of reasons why people of color 
want to bring excuses as to why people are suffering with mental health but i'm sorry like it's real and it's something we need to talk about and it's something we need to remove the stigma from because the the reason why i held it on for so long is because i knew those were going to be my responses i knew i was going to get the foolishness like oh but did you pray about it oh see now you're soft or now you're too sensitive even though i do believe some people in this world are a little bit too sensitive like the world of 2018 was trigger nation but that's a different story but yeah to those who didn't know okay now you know um to those who did know and did try to help me out of it i thank you and i appreciate you but beyond that i just want people to know that like it only takes the person to believe in themselves and to believe that they can bring themselves out of it you can never convince somebody out of a depressive episode like it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen if i truly believe that life is no longer worth living and i want to take my life there is nothing you can say to me that is gonna make me want to live it it's not possible for me what helped me was music music definitely and um and god honestly music and god I got into a situation with somebody that I know, right? And the the situation itself made me have a panic attack. And I haven't had a panic attack in in years. But literally like huffing up puffing like I can't breathe. And like I have my other friend who was trying to be like, oh Elaine, it's okay, da 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 and I'm like it's okay for you because you don't know you don't know what like actions like that mean to me for somebody who feel like they've been abandoned a lot of the time by friends and all that stuff and a person who's been struggling with depression that happens to you all over again and then you have a panic attack and you're like oh my gosh i'm gonna be depressed again and it's so scary to see yourself going back into that slump that slump is scary it's not a fun place to be at so i was like more upset at myself for letting somebody have that much hold over me to get me to a place that i've tried so hard to crawl out of i feel like i said this before this sounds like i'm saying it verbatim but like i clawed my way out of the hole of depression and because because of like one simple thing that somebody who I felt like was my friend said to me. Well, it wasn't one simple thing. It was a, <laughs> a long ass paragraph. But that one thing from one person could crumble all the work that I've put in for so many years. Like, that was so devastating. That was so devastating. But whatever that's life. Where are we at? 21 minutes. I'm gonna call it a wrap. Um, pretty much my takeaways from this is don't underestimate the impact of depression. Someone like me who was happy-go-lucky and whatever had had suicidal thoughts, had genuinely considered taking their life at multiple points in my life. You know, um, 2016 wasn't wasn't too long ago, and the situation that just happened a year ago is not that long ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. There's that. The second one is don't ever force somebody to do something that they don't want to do willingly. You can be there and be a, ha be a hand they can hold, be a shoulder they can lean on. But like it takes that person to build up the strength within themselves to be like, okay, I need help and I'm going to go get the help. Um, the last one is remove the stigma because people aren't going to come up to you and tell you that they're depressed or tell you that they're going through stuff if they feel as if they'll be scrutinized and they'll be criticized and they'll be shunned or whatever so yeah kind of heavy sorry <laughs> but I just want to be as authentic as I can be on this channel um, that's really all I gotta say so see you later <laughs>